Hello dear have you seen the movie brother sun and sister moon watch it you will fall in love with it it's a story of st francis of assisi but what is captivating in that movie is the golden beauty of assisi you know who st clare today i'm going to tell you her amazing story of conversion and dedication but before that My dear friends you are watching my new series of videos called Franciscan Stories. This is episode number 2. In case you missed my earlier series of videos on this channel called Wandering Guru, please visit my channel and type over there Real Stories That Inspire Life by Father Nelson Lobo. Well today I'm going to tell you the amazing story as I said of this golden girl of Assisi, the close and intimate friend of St Francis of Assisi. She was called the little plant of St Francis. There are two sides of the same Assisi coin. The place Assisi in Italy is actually world famous because of these two saints. The beginning of her religious life was indeed movie material. During one lenten service when she was 18 years old, she heard St Francis of Assisi preach in the church of San Giorgio. She was touched She made the most important decision of her life on that day after listening to the preaching of St Francis. You see, preaching has that power. I wish all priests take their preaching seriously. She met St Francis and asked him to help her live according to the gospel. On the Palm Sunday of 12 12 at night, Claire left her father's home and went to the chapel of the Posuncula. Do you remember my first episode in this series on Posuncula? I hope you do. <clears throat> But why would she run away from her father's home? Was her father abusive? No, not at all. Like any good parent, he wanted her to get married in a rich family and settle down. Claire was the most beautiful eldest daughter of Favorino Schiffi, Count of Sasso Rosso, and his wife Ortolana. Tradition says her father was a wealthy representative of an ancient Roman family and her mother was a very devout woman belonging to the noble family of Fiumi. As the saying goes, man proposes but God disposes. God had a different plan for this golden girl. As she left her house at night she was met on the road by the Franciscan friars carrying lit torches. And in the poor little chapel of Posuncula She received a rough woolen habit. She gave up her jeweled belt and took on a common robe with knots in it and sacrificed her long golden hair as a sign of her conversion and dedication to God. Although Francis received her in his order, he had no place to keep her safe. So he placed her in a Benedictine convent for security reasons. Do you know what happened in that convent? Her father and uncles immediately stormed in rage, wanting to take back his beloved daughter. Claire, not wanting to go back home, clung to the altar of the church, threw aside her veil to show her cropped hair and remain adamant. It was a great shock for her father and her uncles who had come determined to take her back home. What they didn't realize was that within 16 days they would get another shock. This time they were shocked not by Claire but by Claire's sister called Agnes. Whew, it was too much to handle for Claire's father. Very soon the two sisters had company. They lived a simple life of great poverty, austerity and complete seclusion from the world according to a rule which Francis gave them. Claire's order became the second order of the great Franciscan movement. They became known as the poor ladies of San Damiano, the place where they lived. The poor ladies went barefoot, slept on the ground, ate no meat and observed almost complete silence. Contemporary accounts glow with admiration of Claire's life in the convent of San Damiano in Assisi. She served the sick and washed the feet of the begging nuns. When she came out from prayer, it was said her fa- her face was so shining it dazzled those around her. She sacrificed her golden hair but God blessed her with a golden halo around her face. Though she is called the little plant of St Francis, she became a solid banyan tree for her sisters and for the great Franciscan movement. 
You might have seen Claire is often pictured carrying a monstrance or the blessed sacrament. You know why? Here is a story. In 1224, an army of Rav soldiers from Frederick II came to attack Assisi. Although very sick, Claire went out to meet them with the blessed sacrament on her hands. She had the blessed sacrament placed at the wall where the enemies could see it. Then on her knees she begged God to save her sisters. She prayed, O oh Lord, protect these sisters whom I cannot protect now. And a voice seemed to answer, I will keep them always in my care. In that moment, a sudden fright struck the attackers and they fled as fast as they could without harming anyone in Assisi. Like St. Clair and her sisters, even today, so many experienced the mighty power of the Blessed Sacrament. Claire became the talk of the town just like St. Francis. Her influence was such that popes, cardinals and even bishops often came to consult her. Claire, because of her extreme poverty and poor food, suffered serious illness for the last 27 years of her life. Every good story comes to an end and so Claire died at the age of 59. Her remains were placed in the chapel of San Giorgio where she first heard St. Francis preach which changed her life. At Pope's request, the canonization process of Claire began immediately. And two years later, in 1255, Pope canonized Claire as Saint Claire of Assisi. The construction of the Basilica of St. Claire was finished in 1260. And on October 3, 1260, Claire's remains were transferred there and buried beneath the high altar. Nearly 600 years later, her remains were transferred once again to a newly constructed shrine in the crypt of the Basilica of St. Clair. My friends, do you know that St. Clair was designated as a patron saint of television in 1958 by Pope Pius XII? Patron of TV? Yes, patron of TV. You may say she lived in 13th century, not in the 21st century, so how come patron of TV? It seems when St. Clair was very ill, she could not attend Mass and was reportedly able to see and hear it on the wall in her room. She is also the patroness of eye disease, goldsmith and laundry. St. Clair's feast is celebrated on August 11th. Many places including churches, convents, schools, hospitals, towns and even counties are named after St. Clair. Well, my dear friends, that was the story of the golden girl of Assisi, St. Clair. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, do share the link with your friends. If you feel lazy to go for Mass, do call on St. Clair to inspire you. And if you, if you feel bored during the sermon, do call on St. Francis to inspire the preacher. Thank you. God bless you.